How you doing folks? I'm James. This is Steve here. Conclusion of the SMU and TCU game. And Steve, this SMU team that came in here today to Emma Carter, it's a totally different and revamped team from that team we covered a year ago. It's a lot different. Dallas. Yeah, it's a lot different. Uh, SMU's first drive they had, uh, thanks to the help of a personal foul penalty, late hit on the sideline. They got moved up 15 yards, but Matt Davis gets a little 22 yard run here, throws another 30 yard pass. Next thing you know, SMU jumps up 7 to nothing and stuns his crowd a little bit. Yeah, they, they, they did. I mean, they, they, they made it close there for a little while, you know. And yes. you, you didn't really know what was going to happen because you figured, hey, this could be one of those games, you know. Was it the uh, the fourth and two late right there in the fourth quarter, that little quick slant route? If they would have converted on that, then that would have made things really interesting. Would have what, got him back within two points, three points, depending on what they did with the two-point conversion. But it would have made things really scary here at Amon G. Carter. Yeah, now we talked about pace of game and everything coming into this game, thinking that looking at last year's game, looking at the way that TCU performed against Stephen F. Austin, yes. the way they performed against Minnesota. Well, they put up 56 I, points, which I did right. call in the pregame. They did put up 56 you did, you points. Did, you did put up, they did put up the 56 points. So it does look points. like this um, offense is going to be pretty much like last year's. You know, high power, can score on anybody, can pretty much do what they want when they want. But they really, I mean, and whatever the point I'm trying to make is really, they didn't have to worry about the pace of the game because the pace of the game kind of dictated itself with yes. what was going on to keep these players in there and get them ready for next week to go up to Texas. Game. Yes, because this game will be like a small sample size of what we'll see in, in Lubbock next week. I mean, TCU's really got to be firing on all cylinders. They're going to have to clean up that little play on the outside for Pat Mahomes and Tech. Pat Mahomes is a little bit better version of Matt Davis. He could run and throw, and they need to get that cleaned up with the linebackers. And obviously with the corners covering those back shoulder fades down the field, because those corners, without without the help of the safeties and the linebackers in the middle of the field, struggled with those fade routes tonight. Well, this is a TCU defense, too, that is missing seven starters due to injury yep. that were on the field at this point in time. Um, another These thing, guys are going to have to learn quick on the fly. Yes, they will have to learn on the fly. As uh, Coach Patterson says, it's always next man up. Next man up. He uh, says he doesn't want to make excuses for it. He doesn't want to be that program who makes excuses for it. Dean said he will never do that. Yeah, and, you know, we were down there in that end zone on that Colby listen to be touchdown at the start of the second half. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Patterson says it was cramps after that. It happened. Yeah, we really it, was, it, was, it was asked about after the game, and uh, he shrugged it off like it was no big deal. Said he was fine, just cramps. But, I mean... Looked a little bit more in the cramps than just us. He didn't enter the game. He, he, didn't, didn't, come, he didn't come back into the game after it happened. Ice down. The trainer had him for a while. He was getting off the bike very gingerly like a 70-year-old man. So, who knows? Yeah, they say there's no room to speculate or anything, but the official word we got from that was cramps. On but that. I think for next week in Lubbock to take on the high-power Red Raiders offense, uh, they're going to need Listen to be on the outside with Dodson to really keep up and put some pressure on that tech defense. Well, now this Red Raider to Red Red Raider. Can't even talk tonight. This Red Raider team that's up there in Lubbock now with Coach Cool, you know, yeah. it's a totally kind of different team than it was last year. Yes, they are. You know, we got to see kind of Pat Mahomes at the start of his college career, and, you know, I think he played one game before he played, he played the, the Baylor, Baylor game, game yes. that we covered there at Texas Stadium, had the shootout and everything. And then uh, today, uh, Arkansas lost to Texas Tech in. Fayetteville. Yes. So, you know, it's kind of going to be kind of, kind of a question to see what happens with everything. Plus, another thing that I think is going to be an interesting dynamic to look forward to this game is, you know, Coach only talked about the offensive sides with um, Coach uh, Cliff Kingsbury and everything. But, you know, the other thing is to look at the revamp side that's the defensive side of this team that's up there at Texas Tech. And they've got David Gibb there that's running that, who came from the University of Houston. Yes. We did cover him in his XB's Heart of Dallas Bowl, correct? No, it wasn't his XB's Heart of Dallas Bowl. It was the Armed Forces Armed Bowl, Forces Bowl that where he was the right. Yes, right. Exactly. It was here in this stadium that uh, they came back and won. Because remember, he talked at the end. He was talking about, look, I told the guys from day one of his time like that. We're going for two. Going for two. And they went for the yes. two, and they won everything. Um, now, we always talked about Patterson. He said, you know, like I said in the pregame show, he talked about that the reality of his offense was somewhere in between the Minnesota game and the game against um, – Stephen F. Austin. Yes. But we look at this game here against SMU. Uh, you know, it's SMU, I'm not going to say they were better competition for TCU than the Minnesota game was. But to see this performance and what it is now, I mean, where do you think the reality on this offense lies? I think the reality is pretty much what we what we saw today. I mean, uh, when they scored 70 against Stephen F. Austin, SMU is a little bit better of a team, I believe, talent-wise and scheme-wise. So I think the reality is, is TCU is about a 45 to 55-point team you know, offensive week. And I think that's pretty much what we're going to see throughout the remainder of the year. Until, you know, you get into a crunch time game away, like you got at Oklahoma, that might be a little dampering to their offense. But, I mean, it's still going to be a high-powered offense. I will put up 40-plus points again. Boring, you know, your rain to bounce the ball, fumble, and the interception here and there. 
And um, another key of the game we talked about before this game started was the play of these young linebackers yes. for this TCU team and how they had to be able to contain Davis. Yes. And they were able to for some parts, but they weren't able to for other parts. No, not at all. And they better get it better get it cleared up real quickly with Mahomes at Texas Tech next week. And Gary Patterson told us after the game that they were in the right places, they just couldn't make the tackle. Well, that's kind of scary to hear. I mean, if they can't make the tackle, then what do you think they're going to do against better quarterbacks that they see down the road here in the Big 12? Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, that one of the key guys that they had on that outside position that helped them out was Paul Dawson. Uh -huh. And he did have seven interceptions from that position. But, you know, you can't expect every team to do everything that's like that. Exactly. And then the third, the third key we had was special teams. Uh, I don't know how much can be said about special teams because there really wasn't too much special teams besides kickoffs and a few punt returns on this game. I mean, yeah. special teams kind of seemed like a mute subject that we had talked about. Yeah, I mean, TCU had, what, two punt returns of, what, 22 yards and 29 yards. I mean, that was a little bit of a factor, but it wasn't like game deciding the special teams. It had really nothing nothing to do with it too much at all games. Yeah, I, but I think the one key thing we can take from this game moving forward that I think TCU really needs to improve on if they are going to be able to do something in the Big 12 is they let SMU go 7-for-7 seven seven in the red zone today. Yes. And they need to clean up that red zone at defense because if they don't do that, they're going to be in for a world. And SMU was a team that really doesn't have a solid rushing attack. It's basically just Matt Davis. Matt Davis on the draw. Matt Davis on the draw. Maybe scrambling right and left. And that's kind of scary when you go up against some of these other teams in the Big 12, like Mahomes and Texas Tech and uh, OU, for example. Um, you're going to have the quarterback that can run, and you get two or three different running backs that can run. They need to get that cleared up real quick. Well, the Texas Tech game will be in Lubbock, so we won't have any coverage for that for you and everything. The next game here will be against the University of Texas for homecoming and everything. Um, anything you're looking forward to with this TCU game in Texas? In Texas, well, I'm looking to see how this TCU offense will do against a better defense. I mean, Texas, I mean, granted, yes, they're still struggling at quarterback, struggling to score points, struggling to get their uh, receivers involved, but they still do have a pretty solid defense. I mean, what, they were, what, third-ranked defense in the Big 12 last year? TC will be a tough challenge for them to see really where this offense is going to be at for the rest of the year, I believe. And I think another question, too, that's going to be really fascinating going into this game that's going to happen in a couple of weeks here is who's going to be the quarterback that's going to be running this long war I, I agree. I, I mean, it's. I think that's still up in the air whether it's Swoops or not. I, yes. don't, I really don't know. I think the uh, leash is getting really short on Swoops now. I think, um, I mean, book's already out on him. Can't look down the uh, middle of the field. Can only throw out quick slants and screens. you got to be able to do more than that college football, folks. Uh, Mac Brown for AD, yes or no? <laughs> for Texas, it would make sense, but I think to bring the old, old style, old boys school back, I think it would be a little bit too much pressure on Charlie Strong and make him a little uncomfortable. All right, guys, that's going to be it for our post game show here from the field. Uh, we'll see you this week on our weekly show if you'd like to check that out. Other than that, we'll probably see you two weeks here back at Amon Carter Stadium for homecoming when the Horn Frogs take on the Longhorns. Anything else you want to add before we leave? Just recall that I did score, uh, call the total amount of points scored by TC, or 56 points. All right, well, we'll make sure we give you a little heart sticker or star or something like that. I'd a boy. I would appreciate it. All right, that a boy. Well, good job. <laughs> we'll see you all later.